Yes, and I don't like that. See, people say America is the land of the free. Meanwhile, there are decisions like this being made. And yeah, I, yeah, I just have a, you have kind of image about America that you, you America is freedom. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I I personally I feel way more free here in France. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thanks. Um, what's your name? My name is Sham. Sean. And I'm living in India. Okay. Very good. I'm from the United States of America, um, but I'm living in France. Yes. Why are you living in France? Well, I moved here about six years ago mm -hmm. um, because I got a job teaching English here and I could already speak French and I wanted to be not in the United States anymore. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to explore a bit. Um, and yes, then I've just loved it and I've stayed ever since. <laughs> I see. So uh, how long have you been living in France? It will be six years in September. Did you get the residence? Um, it's a long, long process here. I So not yet. I'm in my master's. So once I'm finished with my master's and I have a more secure and stable job, mm -hmm. then I will, well, then I'll apply for the citizenship. Okay, so you're studying and and also teaching? Yes, that's it. I see. And how long have you been in Cambly? Um, Almost exactly two years. It was in June 2021 that I started with Cambly. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. where do you see the most of the students from in Cambly? I've seen a lot from China lately. Um, I've mm -hmm. seen some students from India before too. Um, some from Saudi Arabia, um, Japan sometimes. Yes, it tends to be those three countries mainly. Yes. Japanese, oh, I see. So you, mm -hmm. you can speak French. How did you learn the language? Oui, je parle français. Um, I learned, well, I started learning in middle school. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been more than half of my life that I've at least been exposed to France or spoken French or mm -hmm. been exposed to French in some capacity. Um, mm -hmm. My state is very close to Canada. So going to Canada, I am... Um, I would see French all over the place, you know, in some parts of Canada, they speak French and mm -hmm. yes, then I, I developed an interest in it um, mm -hmm. and studied all through my schooling. Yes, uh, up, up to the end of university of my, well, my first studies, you, now I'm in my master's. You mentioned you don't want to go to US. Well, what was the reason for that? Oh, you mean that I don't want to be there anymore? Yes because i was going to say that's where i'm from um well it's funny i'm going back to see my family in a couple of days of course i'm not going to just totally abandon my family but um i i kind of felt like there was something better out there it was just one of those classic feelings that they describe of i kind of feel like i don't really fit here and there's something better I fit better somewhere else. I just sort of had that gut feeling, I guess. I've only had ever a couple really strong gut feelings in my life, and that was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't drive. Mm -hmm. I don't drive. So I don't have the same independence in the US as I do here. Um, just got the feeling it was kind of boring. It wasn't really for me. And that's why I left to start. And then since then, well, I left shortly after Trump was elected and just watching the state of politics and the state of social issues in the United States. I'm not necessarily even proud to be from there. I don't I don't think I want to go back into that mm. situation that it's going on there. Mm. What are the things that upset you in America? Um, there's the issues with gun control there are regular mass shootings still I heard and about that. you have okay that is true right mm -hmm. yes absolutely people are much too attached 
to having guns and to the rights to have I them. I see a um, lot of content uh, from America on YouTube mm-hmm. having guns, you know, like mm-hmm. shooting, mm-hmm. hunting. I see mm-hmm. a lot. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that you do. So there's that side of things. Um, there are a lot of situation, or uh, sorry, a lot of decisions that have been made by the Supreme Court lately. Um, I don't know how closely you follow American politics yourself, but um, mm-hmm. about abortion last year and mm-hmm. who has access to abortion, mm-hmm. um, I disagreed. They, I disagreed with the limits that they were putting on it, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's a bodily autonomy issue. Um, mm-hmm. And there are other issues like that, that people who make decisions that they're okay with, just make them and they assume everyone else has to be okay with it. And lately, a lot of LGBTQ people's rights have been taken away. Honestly, I need really? to look more. Yes. I need to study up more on that, to be honest, now that I say that. But I've, I've heard that the Supreme Court has made some harmful decisions for LGBTQ people. And I know that there were limits put on drag shows, on things like that. Um, yes, mm-hmm. and I don't like that. See, people say America is the land of the free. Meanwhile, there are decisions like this being made. And yeah, you, I, you I just have a, You have kind of image about America that you... America is freedom. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I personally, I feel way more free here in France. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what are the good things in France? Well, I mean, France has its own issues too, but <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a perfect place. But for a place for me to live, it's better. Um, well, I have people I really care about here. And at the end of the day, it's for the people who I stay mm-hmm. for. Um, I like, well, I studied to be a teacher back in the U S and so I was already familiar with teaching, but then that's what I'm studying here too. I'm studying to be an English teacher and I've worked in English classrooms before and I've loved the way that they approach English teaching here. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of room for the teacher to make their own decisions about what they teach in a class. Um, uh-huh. So I'm, I'm really excited to finally have my own English classroom in France and teach what I want to teach. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yes. And yes, it's how, people, it's, mm-hmm. how's the uh, education system difference between America and France? Well, here... There are definitely similarities. Um, Teachers have fewer hours face-to-face with students in France than in the U.S., Mm -hmm. um, which I I like. That's a benefit for me. It means that I have more time to prep and things, um, and it's a bit more humane. For education, I think the U.S. is stricter with curriculum and with what needs to be taught. Yes, I think that's a big difference, or at least France follows different curriculum. I've noticed that there are philosophy classes in high schools here in France, and that's not so much the case in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, The school days are longer. The structure of the school days is different um, because kids here go... hmm? What are the timings in in France? Kids here in France go to school at eight and they will have class until noon. They go back to class at one in the afternoon and they leave usually by 5 p.m. Sometimes Goodbye. it might be more four. Maybe some days they leave at five, at four, but the school day ends at 5 p.m. So it's a longer school day. It's about students or about teacher? Students. Um, well, some days maybe a teacher would be there till five. But a teacher is not there eight to five every single day. Um, mm-hmm. Their classes sort of cycle through. So students stay for uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, nine hours in the school? Yes, just about. They're there eight to five. Yes. They might That's have some free periods. 
Mm-hmm. That's a very long time. What they will, what they have, what they, what time they have left in a day. It's sad, honestly. I, I, like I said, I really, I mean, from a teacher perspective, I really prefer grants. But for the students, I know they don't have a lot of time. I talk to the students and I say, oh, what's your hobby? And a lot of the times they don't have any because they don't have time. They come home and they eat dinner and they do their homework. Um, yeah, then they go back to school tomorrow. No. Yes, yes, ex- exactly. It is a lot. Like I said, they might have some free periods. They might have some periods where they don't have something. But yes, it. Uh, that's the school day. It goes that um, long. People are in the school day. How many day. subjects they have? You know, probably more than in the U.S., um, and that's probably why. They take, uh, and I'm talking middle school and high school. I'm not as familiar with below that in France. I can't speak as well to below that. But they have, by the time they're in high school, everyone takes English and one or two other languages. Um, here in my part of France, it's typically German they will they'll usually be taking english and german or italian or spanish or something Mm -hmm. like that and then they take french um they take philosophy they take history and geography they take math they all take one type of science earth sciences but they might take another science Mm -hmm. um they study all these subjects in english or in french in French. English would be the only one that would be in English. Um, so English would be just as a language, right? Right, right. Yes. There are some special schools, but I'm just talking in general. I see. There's because in India, yes. in India, mm-hmm. all the subjects are in English. Oh, okay. They have okay. more importance the, towards English. Well, of course. Well, it's part of the Commonwealth, but... um. There aren't any schools that teach in any different languages in India. It's all English. Oh, uh, the teaching. I mean, we we t- we learn. We have subjects. We have books written down in English, but they teach us in Hindi medium. Mm-hmm. That's right? going to and make us understand, and they understand teach us in Hindi, but that creates even more confusion. Mm-hmm. Because when we, we understand in the classroom, then we go home and we try to study from our books. And we cannot understand because of the English. Mm. Oh, and that's challenging. Then, wow. then, we, then we cram. We don't understand. We cram. We try mm-hmm. to memorize. This mm-hmm. is uh, the problem in India. I see. Except those schools uh, who teach in English and also subjects are in English. But hmm. most of the schools are bilingual. Okay. So they they have problem. But so those but the schools who are completely English, it's okay hmm. for them. And there are government schools where generally parents don't prefer their children to go because of the infrastructure is okay. very, very, very poor. That's no good. Yeah. Yeah. I went to government school in my 11th and 12th standard uh yeah it was bad i mean compared to the primary and secondary the it was good okay yeah but That's there's so not much studying there it's just you go and make attendance and nothing much <laughs> that's why parents you just go children to send their children to public uh, private schools in India. Mm, okay. Except few states like Delhi. Uh, Delhi has improved mm. a lot recently in mm. public schools and some other states, but majority of the places is the, the government infrastructure are very bad. I see. So are you... How about in, how about in France? Do they prefer to go to government, public or private? Um, I think if they have the means, they'll go to private. And there's there's a lot of push 
to get kids in shape to go to private schools. But the public schools, there's no problems with the public schools. And there are plenty of people who, uh, obviously there are problems. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, but the public schools are fine comparatively. But um, yes, they, I know in my city specifically, I don't know about in other cities, but yeah. in the city I live in, yes, a lot push for private, yes. I see. All right, our time is up. Yes, nice to meet you. Bye. Nice to meet you too. Thanks. Take care.